We're going to start off with a story about a Sunday afternoon in St. Louis in the summer of 1943. It has to be, well, one of the worst days, one of the biggest disasters in the city's history. It was in the middle of World War II, but it didn't happen in Europe or in the South Pacific. It happened right here on the home front. It happened on August 1st of 1943, 75 years ago, in front of thousands of people at Lambert Airport, a crash that took the lives of some of the city and county's most prominent civic leaders. Over the years, I've heard the story from three people who were there. One was a photographer, the late Jack Zert, who took a lot of great pictures in his lifetime, but not another one like this. For years, I'm the guy that made the picture of the plane crash. The other two who saw it happen, they were just kids. It was a Sunday, a warm, sunny day. It was during the war. It was uh, sort of like a promotion for selling war bonds. St. Louis's Robertson aircraft was making gliders here for the war. These films of the gliders were shot later in action. They were throwaway aircraft used once to get men and equipment behind enemy lines and then abandoned. They would earn a reputation for unpredictability, especially on landings. That day in 1943, it was a chance for St. Louisans to see one of their community's contributions to the war effort. And I was standing on the steps of the administration building facing east. I was sitting on my dad's uh, shoulders. And the tower made an announcement that the glider was to be uh, boarded and uh, they had the mayor of St. Louis and a whole lot of dignitaries were going to take a glider ride. And the glider was made right there in St. Louis. Mayor William D. Becker led a group of distinguished passengers for this demonstration flight, leaders of local government and industry. The routine photo assignment was given to Cub photographer Jack Zert. We did a number of close-up pictures and uh, uh, a few things like that, and then we even went inside the plane, made pictures of the, uh, the passengers seated on either side of the aisle, and uh, we even asked if we could go up with them. Thought it would be interesting shooting their expressions and things like that, but they wouldn't allow us to take cameras, so we needed that. <laughs> so we didn't go. Jack Zert wasn't the only one who didn't get on board. The mayor's wife, Louise Becker, was invited and was looking forward to her first glider trip, but was disappointed when told at the last minute that having women on board was against military rules. The glider had already made one demonstration flight that day, and it was once again tethered to the tow plane. After takeoff, the cable would be released and the engineless craft would be piloted down to land in front of the crowd. A day before the flight, reporters had asked Mayor Becker about the possible hazards. He said he didn't think it would be dangerous, and then jokingly said, when our time comes to die, there isn't much we can do about it. As for the wisdom of putting so many important people on the same glider, he said if our boys are asked to use these things, why shouldn't we? It took off, and... Uh flew quite a distance around. Flew overhead real low with the glider behind it. And I made pictures of it flying across. And it got up a little higher and the glider released. And the glider was on its own. And almost instantly, one of the wings moved up into a 45 degree angle. The first thing I thought, and I've heard this mentioned several times, in tragic episodes from the past, I thought it was part of the act. And the wing broke off, and it just nosed yeah. right over and right into the ground. So I decided to, uh, to keep it in my finder and track it till just before it hit the ground. Well, it started to spiral. And I wasn't thinking about the poor people inside. I was thinking about making a photograph. Uh, my heart was in my mouth as the a wing turned and pointed directly at me, and I said to myself, well, that's no picture. Uh, I got to get it all the way around before it hits the ground. Well, it did make one more spiral, and that's when I shot. And then, bang, it was on the ground. Might have been a sound, 
similar to an explosion. I still remember it to this day. A glider hitting the ground straight down and the wing fluttering down after it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the tower said that uh, there's nothing else we can do here. Please go home. And people, I think, were in a state of shock for the most part and um, began to file out. It was discovered that a metal piece connecting the wing strut to the glider had been machined by a subcontractor much, much too thin, and the parts had gotten by quality control inspectors. Two inspectors resigned and there were lawsuits. And while a grand jury denounced the manufacturing and the lack of inspection, it said that while there had been a shirking of moral obligations, there was nothing that could be prosecuted. There's a plaque in City Hall with the names of the pilots and the passengers. Mayor Becker, the county's presiding judge, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, and William Robertson, the head of Robertson Aircraft and a St. Louis aviation pioneer. This tragedy would become a footnote in the home front story of a world war. But there were those who said the loss of so many prominent civilians brought needed attention to a problem that, if it hadn't been fixed, may well have cost more lives on the battlefields of Europe. Nearly 4,000 glider troops took part in the Normandy invasion.